C360 today. A couple things about the scanner. We can run the scan completely from the front display, which is I'm going to run uh, from, from for today from this video. We can also run it from an iPad if we chose to run it that way. Um, a couple different settings we'll set up in the scanner. Uh, one is scan density. And in the scan density setting, we have low, medium, and high. Uh, in this case, uh, medium is probably going to give us enough detail for the distances we're talking about here. So I'm going to stick with medium level of detail. I'm going to have the images on. So uh, after it does the scan, it will also capture the images. And the images are captured in one minute. So images add a minute to the scan time, uh, but uh, they add also the ability to colorize the points when we're done. Now, for the darker areas, when we get back in here, um, normal scanner would be able to pick that up with the camera. But this uh, particular model has what's called HDR built in, uh, which we found to be able to capture images very well, even in uh, low light conditions. Uh, so as we get toward there, I'm going to keep the images on uh, so we can look at that in the data set later. Uh, I'm also the option to do what's called a double pass. And the double pass, it will make two passes and capture the same area. And what the second pass does is confirm the data from the first pass. So if there's anything that's in this first pass but not in the second pass, the scanner will know automatically to get rid of that detail. So if we had a busy area with people walking through, the double pass could uh, potentially get rid of a lot of those uh, uh, points that we don't need to show up in the scan. In this case, there's nobody here, so a single pass is going to be fine, and uh, we'll just let it do the one pass to capture the data. The real key uh, feature of this scanner that makes it different from a lot of other scanners in the market and as far as I know, it's the only scanner in the market that has this technology. Uh, it's uh, what they call Viz, and that's this uh, icon here. I always leave Viz on. What Viz does is when I do the scan and I move the setup to another area, the cameras, and there's several different cameras around the unit, look around and kind of keep track of its surroundings. So when I move from the setup to the next one, it automatically knows where it is relative to this first setup. So what that allows me to do is be able to move the scanner without having to set any targets around it. So I can move the scanner anywhere around this area, and the Viz technology will keep track of where it's at. Later in the software, when we download it, you'll see that the scans are already registered together, meaning these individual points and setups are already registered to each other. So instead of having to spend time with targets or manual registration uh, in the software on the post side, everything's already going to be registered for me when I download that. And when we get to the download step, you're going to be able to see that. Now, the green light is on, meaning it's ready to scan. Now, I don't need to level this instrument to scan, so there's no bubbles on it. I just kind of put it on the tripod where I want to get the detail, and when I'm ready, I'm going to hit the big red play button, and it's going to go. Now, this scan will take 1 minute and 51 seconds. The first pass, you'll see uh, the scanner turn on, and the scan will be done, and then the next pass will be the photos.
I'm not sure if you're able to hear it. At the end of the scan, a little chime sounds. Let us know it's done. Also, the light, which was blinking, has now gone back to solid green, meaning the scan is done. Now I'm ready to pick it up and move it to the next setup. Now, my preferred method of doing this is simply just to grab the tripod legs over the shoulder and carry it to the next location. All right, this is going to be our second setup. And again, when we put the tripod down and the light goes green, that means we're ready. Again, there's no leveling here, so I eliminate that step in the process that was necessary in older scanners. Uh, and again, I'm going to use the same scan settings, and when I'm ready to scan, hit the button again and go. Chime sounded again, timer's at zero, green on is on, I'm going to pick up and move to our final setup. Alright, this is our final setup, and again, green light's on, button is red, press it and we're ready to go. scan is done. See the light is green. So at this point, um, the icon to show that it's recording of the memory card is uh, now gone and I can pull the memory device out. So all the scans are recorded to this device. Next step is I'm going to plug this into a PC and download the data and run it through Register 360. Next part of this video, we will go over the RTC in more detail. We will also talk about uh, accessories, both included and optional, starting with the tripod. Uh, this uh, tripod is not part of the standard kit, but something we will generally include. Uh, it's lightweight carbon fiber. Uh, it's compact. It fits inside of the backpack. It's really easy to carry around in the field. Now, you can use a standard tripod, a uh, server tripod with the RTC. You just need to get uh, an adapter for it. Uh, also, uh, not part of the standard kit, but definitely an option that we will generally uh, include is the RTC backpack. Uh, it's made specifically for the RTC. Um, the RTC includes a, a carrying case, but I definitely prefer this uh, for moving around the field. Uh, it's a lot more convenient. If I open up the back of the case, this is the compartment that the RTC fits in. Including the RTC, you can also carry four batteries in separate compartments here. Take the RTC out. Our RTC weighs about 11 pounds or so, uh, so it's uh, definitely lighter than previous generation scanners, but it's not lightweight. And it's not uh, something you're afraid it's going to blow over easy in the wind. It's definitely got some mass to it. You can see the cameras for the VIS technology. They go all the way around, uh, also including the top. Uh, these cameras what keeps track of the VIS as it's moving between different setups. Uh, something else I didn't mention in the field is the other sensors that are built into the RTC, uh, including a GPS, compass, and altimeter. GPS obviously doesn't work indoors, but outdoors it helps with positioning uh, in conjunction with the compass and the altimeter. So it's got more than just the camera sensors keeping track of where it's at. Also, you've got a battery compartment here, mounts two batteries at a time. Uh, approximate battery life will depend on if you're using the double pass technology, what resolution you're scanning at, whether you're doing the photos or not. Uh, but generally speaking, it's at least four hours. I find I get about five or six hours out of a set. It's definitely enough to get you going all day. We've also got the memory compartment, which we talked about in the field part. Take the memory card out. Now this is a 256 gigabyte USB 3 memory device. Uh, it is like a branded. Now we haven't tried a third party memory device in the RTC yet, but this compartment uh, is pretty much shaped the exact shape as this device here. Uh, so for now we're just going with these devices. 
Um, they are, um, as I mentioned, 256 gigabytes. You get two of them as part of the kit, so you actually get two cards. This is a really easy way to download data. We see you have to use cables and things before, but I can simply take this out, plug it into my computer, you know, the USB 3 or USB 2 port, uh, USB 3 obviously being the faster, uh, and be able to download directly into the software. Uh, and if I need to send the RTC out, I can simply put the other memory card back in it and uh, send it back out in the field. Now, taking the device, plugging it into either again a USB 2 or 3 port, USB 3 being faster. And the next part of this video, we'll talk about taking the data, uh, bringing it into like the software, uh, being able to do some bit of basic manipulation. But ultimately, what we're looking to do is take the data from the field and get it out into uh, whatever software we're going to be using for our deliverables.